A very good afternoon to all of you. And I welcome all the participants for the post-lunch session. Uh, in this session, we have uh, Dr. Felix Bast from our very own university, Central University of Punjab. Mm, I know, I guess most of the participants must be very quite familiar with Dr. Felix by now. <laughs> but uh, as a formal thing, let me uh, introduce you. Uh, I would uh, say somebody who is actually knitting up all this program together and making it happen. Uh, so Dr. Felix, uh, he is associate professor at our university, Central University of Punjab. Uh, as you can see, uh, he has done brilliantly throughout his academics and uh, uh, he's a very enthusiastic teacher uh, as is apparent from you know, the president of India uh, inviting him for the in-resident inspired teacher. Uh, he is an elected national core committee member of INIAS and he's heading biology and the medicine area. Then he is also a member of national COVID-19 task force by INSA and also uh, induced by Indian scientists response to COVID-19. So apart from this, I think I would add more few lines which are not reflected in the slide. He's an he's a avid science writer and communicator as I know him. You must have seen some of his you know, recent very general and uh, uh, logical and you know relevant uh, YouTube videos. Uh, I guess many of you must be enjoying them. And then lastly, many more, there, there's an entire list I can just talk about. A unique feather in his cap is that he, he was a part of uh, Indian scientific expedition to Antarctica, 2016-17 uh, batch. And uh, I think he's almost always excited to share his experiences. And you see the penguins in that SL, you know, the science leadership workshop. That is the or precise origin. He has put his ex ex entire experience. And I think we are enjoying that. So uh, over to Dr. Felix. Uh, we are really happy to have you uh, as a speaker, apart from, you know, as a host. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Manju. It is really nice of you for the introduction. I'm really humbled, uh, Dr. Manchu Jain, yeah. and uh, allow me to share my screen. So I have a small presentation sure. uh, for this meeting. So this talk is going to be a very general talk about uh, the virtues in a science leader. According to my perception, what are the virtues that I see in a science leader? So. A uh, little bit about me. Many of you don't know that uh, from my uh, name, many of the many, uh, many questions I get from the general audience is, are you really an Indian? Because your name doesn't sound like an Indian. Felix Boss sounds like a foreign name, but no, uh, I'm pretty much Indian. I'm born in a traditional family. Basically, my father, uh, he, he unfortunately expired uh, 2016. And uh, yes, uh, he was actually uh, uh, into so many things. He was a, a teacher, Vishnu Ambition was his name. And uh, my mother is Ratnavalli, and I'm born in a traditional Hindu Brahmin family. And uh, you know, the basically the the name. Uh, what has, has happened is that the Felix Bast is basically, uh, you know, it is something uh, you can call it as nom de plume that I changed my name. You know, I, I changed my name because of so many influences. For example, Catcher in the Rye is uh, one of the very interesting book that I read. Uh, as young, as a teenager. So many influences are there, including Candide as the Voltaire. Uh, you know, the Voltaire has written the Candide and so many of Voltaire's books as well. You know, how many of you know the Voltaire's name was not Voltaire, it was Francois Mary Auret. And he changed his name uh, to the Voltaire because of so many reasons. And my name itself was earlier named Srijit Vadakya Matam Nambishan is basically a religion and caste identifying name. So I don't want to have associate my name with that kind of connotation. I was more like an iconoclast or a maverick when I was young. So uh, of course I was a, a big time, a cat lover. I love cats a lot. And my uh, name, my surname, Bast, as you can see, is basically a goddess of cats in ancient Egypt. Uh, this is a statue of the bastard from the British Museum, London. And uh, this Bast is basically the goddess of cats. And Felix itself is the, the name of, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, the scientific name of Felis, uh, which is quite similar to Felix. Felix is the scientific name of the cats, Felix Domesticus. And also, as you know, the Felix is a very famous uh, character in Disney character of, uh, you know, the cat character. So I, I was an avid cat lover. And uh, yes, of course, the icon of maverick times 
uh, you know, of my teenage days, uh, actually asked me to change my name. So I did it and uh, I'm not looking back. So, well, now coming to the science leadership, according to me, the science leadership is, you know, it is not a position or a title. That is what many people make uh, get confused about that. According to my perception, it's not nothing to do with the position. It is an action and example, how you actually lead your life in accordance with the, the, the scientific thinking and scientific temperament to make you a good leader. It's nothing to do with your leadership. Uh, I mean, the position. So leadership is all about the actions. So it's a very interesting quote by Rumi, the Persian, uh, you know, the scholar as well as the poet. Yesterday, I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today, I'm wise, so I'm changing myself. So I think it's a very profound wisdom uh, that is being relayed in this uh, Rumi Scott that we ourselves have to change and uh, ourselves have to uh, you know, live in accordance with nature uh, and uh, in accordance with the, the scientific thinking to become a better science leader. So great science leaders don't preach what to do. As per my, uh, you know, my perception, the great science leaders show you how it is being done. You know, you yourself becoming uh, a part of the scientific missionary. So uh, as a leader, we should empower others than anointing ourselves as supreme authorities. That is what, how I consider the science leadership. So, you know, if you anoint yourself as a supreme authority and uh, in, uh, forcefully uh, you know, give the uh, preaching to others, then definitely you're not going to be a good uh, science leader. This is also my favorite, one of my favorite quote. Uh, this is by uh, you know, he's a famous uh, stoic philosopher. If you accomplish something good with hard work, then the labor passes quickly, but the good endures. If you do something shameful in pursuit of pleasure, then the pleasure passes quickly, but the shame endures. So it's extremely important. The virtue is very important quality of a science leader and defining what constitutes a virtue, good virtue is extremely important. So that is why I would like to spend some time with you all about talking about the virtue. So for me, one of the great leaders, not, not just merely science leader, he's more like exploration leader, is Ernst Shackleton. He did a fantastic, uh, you know, the uh, uh, probably most well-known expedition to Antarctica in 1914. And uh, guess what? His expedition in Endurance, he, the, the ship that he took is called Endurance. It was a failed mission because he couldn't even reach Antarctica, but still he's revered as the, the best ever a leader can ever have. So, so many of his qualities. So to recite his story, actually started from South Georgia, he went all the way to the Queen Modland, but right here somewhere in uh, October 1915, his uh, ship, the Endurance, got stuck in packed ice. And, uh, you know, they have to, ultimately they have to, uh, you know, abandon that ship and the endurance sinks in November 1915, and it has crushed and abandoned, but all the 28 men friends, he could save all the life uh, because of his uh, pursuit of, uh, you know, the grit and excellence. So that actually makes a great leader, even in terms of uh, trouble, how you are actually leading an, an organization. So that this is a, basically a failed mission, but still it also depends on how you define the failure. Is this a failed mission? According to me, it's not a failed mission. Even though he couldn't able to reach Antarctica, he could save all the lives. The 28 men he saved because of his perseverance and because of his determination. So I think that that actually, that is the greatest quality of any science leader. So he his original plan was going to Antarctica through the Queen Maud land. And I was fortunate to be part of this Queen Maud land, India's uh, Antarctic station. One of the India's Antarctic station called Maitri is somewhere here. And I, I, I could able to spend two months in, uh, you know, the Maitri. So that is, uh, you know, that is what I would like to tell you. So failures make a great science leader. That's really, really important. So uh, it's not that failures are, you know, the, the opposite. Many people, especially youngsters, consider failures as an antonym the opposite of the success, but I won't say that. The failures are not antonym, but it's a part of the success. So if you ask me what the science is, my answer would be learning from the failure. That's how the science makes progress. So British, uh, famous British philosopher of science, Karl Popper called it as falsification. That is exactly how we are progressing through the feedback loops. 
So failures, we should treat them as inflection points and information to inform the future decision. Exactly, that is how the Bayesian logic works. You know, learn from the failure for the further improvement. That is exactly how the science works. So it's a very famous quote by, again, a stoic philosopher, Marcus Aurelius, the impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. So all these failures and all those impediments, all those obstacles, pay way, makes us a better leader. So a good science leader is someone who knows the scientific thinking. That is extremely important that uh, it's a great asset of any science leader is to know what the scientific thinking is all about. So well, as a young uh, leader uh, ourselves, we all know that the paper rejection happens most of the time. Lab protocols also doesn't work. So don't let those demotivate you. The ability to learn from failures is the most important quality a science leader can ever have. So authoritarian leaders aren't good for science at all. As science by itself has no authorities. It is anti-authoritarian, the scientific method, you know, uh, because even a school kid can criticize the scholarly papers of Nobel laureates. And that is how the science grows. So if you're authoritarian man can be a good science leader. That is a wrong conception, according to my perception. Science leadership is all about influence, but not authority. So how you are influencing through ethically and moral manner. So influence, again, doesn't mean that you're in a mad rush to create lots of tremendous followers like politicians do, but they are in a mission to foster scientific temperament in the society, make science works and create better mentors and leaders of tomorrow. So that is extremely important. Uh, you know, that is how I actually define uh, who a science, science leader is. So this is a, a graphic which I got from Skill Camp. And this actually shows you the difference between who a boss and a, a real leader. So leader has to be part of the grassroots level worker. And if, uh, if you think the leader as a boss, like the, this, the boss here, he is actually commanding the workforce to do this and leading the thing. No, that actually that concept is really wrong. Uh, you know, the, basically that concept is wrong. The leader has to be on of this way. So to quote Arnold Glasgow, Glasgow a famous author, a good leader takes title, little more than his share of blame and little less than his share of the credit. A good leader takes a little more than his share of the blame, a little less than his share of the credit. So I think that the quote is really profound here. Another very interesting quote by Simon Sinek, another famous author, a boss has a title while the leader has the people. So if you really want to have the people, then only way is to become part of the grassroots level than uh, being an authoritarian leader. That is how the leadership works. A great science leader should nurture wild ideas, curiosity, and creativity, friends. And she will promote out of the box ideas and tinkering rather than you know the planned work. Yes, the, the research has to be curiosity driven to have a massive impact. The paradigm shift as per the Thomas Kuhn, the American philosopher of science, the paradigm shift happens through serendipitous discoveries rather than the planned scientific experiments. So public trust in science is only, that is, a, that is the biggest problem right now as I can see that, you know, uh, uh, and, um, the public around the world is increasingly award the follow, you know, award the following the government regulations like wearing masks in public places. So today morning as well, the uh, Professor Ramaswamy also pointed out this one. So uh, just like his talk, I'm also uh, standing here in my, uh, sitting here in my house. Otherwise I would have actually worn a mask in any, anywhere in the public places. So wearing mask is important. So as maintaining the public, you know, the, the physical distancing, but nobody's actually following these government rules. Please listen to the government, but not uh, nobody is following it. I think the main problem is the public is not really trusting the science. They're trusting, uh, you know, the, the alternative narratives, false truth and uh, propaganda and, uh, you know, the, the, the pseudoscience and conspiracy theories. That is actually a big problem now. So according to me, the important asset of a good science leader is to build public trust in science. To build public trust in science, we as a leader should communicate the science in plain language accessible to the masses. So that is the biggest asset of a, a good science leader. So a good science communicator it will make a great science leader. So how good you are in communicating the science, that determines how good a science leader you can be. If you ask me who is a good science leader, one example, I can easily give you Carl Sagan. Carl Sagan is a very great 
uh, science communicator you might know the cosmos you know uh, one of the uh, book that i read in school days that actually contributed me to choose a career in science so this is his own statement we are like butterflies who flutter for the day and think it's forever we we think ourselves that we are the really that important man uh, and woman in in the world but actually we are not we are just a star dust you see that is actually the, the statement by the the Carl Sagan himself and now if you look at the Carl Sagan was he actually into a great position no he even failed to become the fellow of the prestigious national academy of sciences in the united states he was not even a fellow but still many people know him and he influenced masses millions of the uh, you know the mortals like us were influenced by the Carl Sagan. So I, I can call, easily I can call him as a great science leader. And here in India, we have uh, Yashpal, Professor Yashpal. I was also one among the school, as a, a school kid, I used to tune into his uh, turning point. You know, in the Durdarshan, I used to listen to the Yashpal's show. So Yashpal is also a great science leader because he influenced millions, I can say. So uh, according to me, uh, the three principle, which is actually very, very important uh, for a science leader is memento mori, that remember you must die. Remember the life is fleeting instance. You know, that is exactly what the Carl Sagan is also saying. So the, the, uh, the purpose of life became more apparent if you think that your days are numbered, you know, the, the, the death is the final thing. So every day morning, so this is a very famous quote by Marcus Aurelius, again, the stock philosopher, when you arise in the morning, think of what a presti precious privilege it is to alive, to breathe, to think, to enjoy, to love. That actually makes you purpose in your life. You know, that is really important. So copy dam is another mantra which I, I love and I follow in my life. Seize the day. That is what the stoic quote means. To be mindful. You know, that is what our, uh, uh, you know, ancient Indian wisdom also says, the meditation being mindful and uh, you know for a science leader active listening is very very important we have to listen to others especially with the mentoring you know that uh, yesterday uh, professor kong was speaking about mentoring and she has uh, emphasized uh, you know that a good quality of mentor is to listen actively so that active listening is really really important amor fati is another very important mantra which i follow love for the fate so whatever the fate is, failures or whatever, we have to be uh, generous enough to accept it. We have to be humble enough to accept the failures. We have to endure the failures. So, uh, you know, one of the very famous quote is by Rita May Brown, the author. Insanity is doing the same things over and over again and expecting different results. You know, so many people think that practice makes man perfect. No. Practice alone will not make the man perfect, but learning from the mistake is more important. That exactly is a scientific method, friends. So according to me, the, the four important virtues anyone can have in your life is courage. That is basically, you know, the, your fortitude to face adverse situations. Justice, that is the ethics and impartiality. Temperance, temperance is all about moderation. Don't go to extreme, extreme right or extreme left, just be in the center. And then the wisdom. Wisdom is also very important to know, to you know, to, to, to know what is actually ethical and what is not ethical, right? The wisdom is also important. This is a very famous quote which I love a lot in my life and as well as in my scientific career. Be less curious about people and more curious about the ideas by uh, Mary Curie. So uh, don't indulge in the discussions about the events or TV soap opera. I don't, I don't really follow it in my life, but I'm more curious about the ideas rather than the people. So that is, I think that it, it, this has to be the leadership, uh, you know, one of the set of any science leader be uh, more interesting about the, uh, you know, the, uh, we have to foster to get more and more ideas rather than, and we have to actually impersonalize whoever the person say, having a personal grudge on that person just forget it so if whatever things have happened with your colleagues never take it for a long time just forget what has happened and just move on and just concentrate only on the ideas and of course time management is very important i've been telling through my youtube channel as well as through my writings that managing time to get things done is very very important quality of a good science leader Unfortunately, people are really suck in uh, time management because they really don't read much about how to manage their time effectively. And some practice which I like and I've been doing for years and I find it really interesting are bullet journaling, then weekly review. So 
for example every sunday i i put up what is actually coming in the next week i review it then scheduling over the to do list i do have a to do list but i i tend to schedule the event you know into my google calendar that's really important and prioritization of the task is really really important this is a very famous quote by 32nd american president dwight eisenhower what is important is seldom urgent and what is urgent is seldom important so we really have to prioritize uh, you know the important task over the urgent uh, task but unfortunately most of us simply you know do the things on a knee jerk reaction basis we prioritize the urgent over the important so this prioritization is extremely important so as a delegation you can uh, delegate the work to a student or a you know the research paper writing to a student to make him a better writer so don't simply write all the papers by yourself or your colleagues you know and uh, this is one of the statement which i like this is from the swedish philosophy ordning ochreda that means everything in its proper place in the world so be organized so there is also a big asset uh, you know uh, or a management asset of any science leader so things have to be in properly arranged and one of my biggest influence in my life has been that i was privileged to be part of bharat scouts and guides and in scouts and guides the motto is be prepared so being proactive rather than reactive you know rather than this knee jerk reaction so reactive being proactive is extremely important a set of any good science leader and this has come to me over and over again during my period in antarctic mission you know in antarctica so prepared to face any kind of adversities in your life so that is what makes a good science leader so this is a quote by abraham lincoln if i had 6 hours to chop down a tree i would spend first 4 hours sharpening the axe you know so that is what the preparation is the key is all on the preparation automation i love automation and i'm also uh, so much into online teaching uh, because i'm also part of the uh, ministry of human resources and development flagship program called swayam uh, i'm also part of uh, uh, i do have a course coordinator i'm a course coordinator i do have a course in swayam and uh, that is also the same thing so online teaching if you do some work if you set it and then you know things are automated and it becomes habituated so that is really saves ton of your time and i'm a big fan of automation this is a famous quote by alexander von humboldt uh, yeah i i like him a lot i read most of his books the most dangerous world view is a world view of those who have not viewed the world so we really have to open up our mind to be receptive on new ideas and to to see what is actually happening around the world uh, you know what are the best practices happening and we have to integrate into our life that is what my philosophy is all about and francis crick the core discoverer of the dna molecule along with uh, watson james watson his famous quote is that the dangerous man is the one who has only one idea because then he will fight and die for it you know that is actually the fundamentalism right that is actually the problem uh, in our uh, uh, everyday life uh, even uh, you know the, the religious fundamentalism is there and also terrorism the terrorists also have just one idea right and they're fighting to save that idea so i i will never support that dogmatic approach in anybody's career so virtues in a good science leader for me if you ask me uh, a good science leader should always consider reason you should always prioritize reason over emotion objectivism or stoicism is extremely important so the truth if it's true say it out true if it's false say it out false don't be uh, you know considerate of something else so intellectual humility humility is a very very important characteristic of any good science leader so intellectual humility is that uh, you know you should understand that we all have limits you know and uh, of course we we are not know all dunning kruger syndrome in the psychology you might know that if you think that uh, you know you are you are super smart then chances are high that you don't know the world really you know so we should accept that we really don't know many things so it's a very famous quote by in a good leader and a great leader is humility and uh, the quote by the plato is the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing so if you really know if you accept that you don't know everything ab- about the world then that is that itself is wisdom and i think that intellectual uh, humility is a great asset of any good uh, science leader so another important asset is compassion compassion is empathy and goodwill so empathy is actually you know uh, looking at the perspective of the second person right goodwill is extremely important to to wish the other person all the best 
you know, to, to, to see that the person recovers from the hardships. So that exactly is what you call compassion and also self-compassion is also important. So we should really know our own limits and we should be compassionate about ourselves because depression is alarming friends. So we should actually, you know, have uh, some compassion about ourselves as well. We are ultimately, we are all animals, right? We are a human being. Grit is extremely important for fortitude and determination. So one of the famous quote by Angela Duckworth, the American poet is, uh, the enthusiasm is common, but endurance is rare. The same endurance of the Ernest Shackleton and many others. So that endurance of the fortitude and determination grit is actually lacking in many of the good, you know, the science leaders of today. And critical thinking, ingenuity, you know, the new, new ideas to foster, all these are really important characteristics. So as balanced moderation or the Swedish concept of lagom, not in either of the extreme, just go to a balanced or moderate or temperance view of the life is extremely important. And the temperance is eat, not to dullness or drink, not to elation. That same temperance is also applicable tremendously in the sciences. So, you know, going to both the extreme is not a good asset at all. So according to me, citizen of the world and creature of the earth is very important asset of any good science leader because citizen of the world, we should actually prioritize world as a one rather than, you know, uh, speaking something else. You know, the world, we have only one home, that is the planet. And the most of the problems that we face today are, uh, you know, the, the problems that the whole world is facing, for example, poverty, hunger, or the climate change, all these are really important. And creature of the earth, we are simply creature. We have to be uh, considerate of the ecological niche, environment, you know, the, the carbon footprint, everything matters. And I think those have to be the priorities of any science, good science leader. And intelligent dissent over passive agreement, that point is really, really important. I always dissent uh, with any opinion of the other. So instead of simply passively agreeing for getting things done, I, I always go with uh, dissent. I register my protest. I go with dissent. And that kind of dissent of uh, your coworkers, a good science leader should be receptive of any kind of dissent rather than uh, you know become authoritative and forcing his or her opinion on others. And Oxfam's razor concept is really important, the simplicity, you know, simple solutions tend to be far more elegant over complicated solutions. Frugality is important to save the resources. Motainai is the, the Japanese concept, exactly the, on frugality. Shibui is another great concept, something like Oxfam's razor, simplicity is important. And wabi-sabi, wabi-sabi is, uh, you know, uh, uh, finding uh, you know, aesthetically finding the beauty in, uh, you know, imperfect things. That is what Wabi Sabi is. That is, I think that is a very important quality of a good science leader. And uh, Miyamoto Musahi's fa fa uh, famous quote is that, uh, you know, uh, truth is not what you want it to be. It is what it is. And you must bend to its power or live a life. You know, so honesty and sincerity is extremely important aspects of a good leader. So truthful. So it's important to, you know, the truth, especially science. Uh, the big talk in the uh, scientific world these days. Yesterday also we spoke about this in uh, high profile retractions that has happened recently. In, in retractions are always happen and retractions is a self-correcting mechanism for the sciences. So tranquility, calm, coziness, Hige, the, the Danish concept of Hige, all these are um, really, really uh, fond of. So be resourceful, that is really important. Core competency matters. So, you know, lifelong learning is really important. We have to actually read a lot. So that is a, a very important asset of any good science leader and science communicator is read more than you write, you know? So uh, the Einstein score is really profound. Once you stop learning, you start dying. You know, so the lifelong learning is really, really important for any science leader. So the question I ask myself every single day before I go to the sleep is, what have you learned today? I do have a journal I'm maintaining every single day. I do write. And what did I learn today? Every day is a learning experience in my life. So, uh, you know, I think everybody should do that. The journaling and learning uh, what you have, I mean, writing out what you have learned in that single day. You should also know when to quit. 
you know perfection doesn't exist so many leaders are uh, you know they they are, they are blindly pursue, pursuing after the perfection so that should not be accepted that people have got their own limitations that's really important we should dissolve our opinions judgments assumptions and beliefs we have to stay open and curious as for that we have to be stay as a student lifelong we should keep on learning the new things and don't live for others action and education is more important than status and validity i think those are big determinants of a good science leader facts are better than dreams i i i usually have a, a problem with this dream big argument i never support that i think that's more like a cliche i've written extensively this is my blog you can see that in my medium blog i've written that war on cliche uh, you know why dream big follow your heart follow your passion work hard pursue your goals i have written that you know you can have a look at that article so against the dream big argument is that instead of self esteem that we are absolutely great or self confidence that i can do anything if i want i can take an intergalactic flight self realization that understand that i have limitations and self compassion that it's okay to feel sad but don't worry too much about the setbacks after all you did a good job or more important friends so instead of self esteem and self confidence self realization and self compassion matters and to get what we want in our life we should be pragmatic and work for it instead of simply dreaming so simply dreaming will not work so i am also against follow your heart or passion argument many people ask you oh simply follow your passion or follow your your heart so the problem with that argument is that most of us do not know what our true passion is so where lies your true passion nobody knows it for example you say that okay my travel uh, my passion is traveling so the now the next question is that uh, you know uh, does traveling gives you money is that traveling uh, uh, something that the world needs to see right now all these are the yes so we need to find a fine balance between what you love what you are good at and what the world needs and what gives you financial support and so on everything matters so what gives you the financial support so of course you have to find uh, you know the the mean to support sustain your life so everything matters so ikigai is a very good japanese way which i learned during my phd time in japan to find the purpose in life so you can search out or read my blogs on yeah. how to implement the ikigai in your life so also beware of the dunning kruger effect passion leads to overconfidence and overconfidence people foolish decisions in their life so it's really really important to be aware of the dunning kruger my books have immensely helped me to have my own world view on meditations by marcus aurelius on the shortness of life by seneca the art of living by pictures all these books more than 2000 years old and you know, i'm happy to note that the first speaker of this program uh, professor ashutosh sharma's uh, favorite books are uh, you know uh, uh, one of his favorite book he recently shared is meditations by marcus aurelius too i strongly suggest everybody to to see what these books are especially on this art of living It's fantastic book by epictetus uh, written 2000 years old and that, that that philosophy is amazing this is full of wisdom so who is a science leader you might ask me who is a science leader yeah, especially in india can you name few science leader friends i can name i can lay, name a number of science leader let me name few bharat ratna professor c n rao professor ashutosh sharma professor chandrima saha padma sri professor dipanga chatterjee professor dipak dandikam mrs dr kiran mazunda show professor magdalena skipper professor r k kohli professor ramakrishna ramaswami professor renu suru professor chandra uh, you know shekhar sim mande professor shahid jamil professor shopna sharma professor shubha tole professor ella shashithara professor alok thawan everybody they are all good leaders friends you know all have lots of interesting attribute all of from humble beginning 
they are not self made science leader they all have humble beginning almost everybody has been educated in government school just like me i'm also educated in a government school in uh, uh, you know my language of instruction during my school days was uh, malayalam so most of them actually went to the government school and they learned that in their own uh, language you know achieve international recognitions by themselves without any political tactics so that is why i actually respect them a lot they are self made leaders and they are all anti authoritarian you know and they do have great and they are they have ingenuous and they are compassionate all these are the attributes of all of these leaders and that is why the the uh, the program the science workshop that you are watching right now is uh, uh, you know it's it's like a dream come true to my life i could able to get all of them in our show and i'm really really happy i'm really humble for all of your support to make this event uh, you know as uh, successful so uh, that is why i'm really happy about all these things so, you know what is actually happening in this uh, science leadership workshop and uh, this is what if if you ask me uh, just one advice for the, the you know the science uh, enthusiasts in general is this uh, this is a quote from uh, louis carroll's through the looking glass now here you see it takes all the running you can do to keep in the same place if you want to get somewhere else you must run at at least twice as fast as than that so that means that you know life long learning is the key it's very important to stay a student be humble and be humble you know the intellectual humility is extremely important rather than thinking that you know everything no we don't know anything so uh, yeah that is extremely important and i would like to end uh, my this brief talk with the famous quote by albert einstein life is like riding a bicycle to keep your balance you must keep moving wisdom is not the product of schooling but of the lifelong attempt to acquire it once you stop learning you start dying we are going back to the same quote thank you so much for listening to me thank you so much uh, felix that was a wonderful talk uh, I, i hope all the participants must have enjoyed it and i see the inbox full of questions for you uh, your your uh, leadership uh, emphasis on the virtues uh, you know taking failures as success ways to success and focusing on the process rather than the end result uh and definitely for the younger say the science students and all uh the uh, the important uh, practical notes on you know time management and uh, developing the positivities and uh, as for the pis is the it's the responsibility of the supervisors to portray the so called negatives the way the world is taking to actually uh, bring out the positives from the negatives so 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 in so everything we know in today's world you know success success and success but sure. then how do we actually take it how do we define it uh, if somebody is success by you know uh, good or bad ways uh, people tend to overlook the path but uh, we, we as supervisors need to induce the path is very very important in the long term that is really going to make you complete and a future uh, you know a true leader who is exactly, uh, yes. working along with the uh with the team it's a team thing so with this i uh i i put up some questions for you so you are actually uh, engaged into a uh, uh, lot of science communication and uh, talking so uh how do you differentiate a scientist communicator from a science journal journalist this is from dr ap jayaraman from maharashtra okay so jayaraman uh, science communicator and science journalism are i i would say these are kind of similar but the journalists are you know the journalist purpose is to investigate i mean there there actually the sphere is a lot more bigger it's not constrained you know confined only to communicate the science so as a science communicator Uh, for me i i feel that the science communicators uh, the primary task is to communicate what is actually happening in the world of primary scientific research uh, you know uh, to write that in a common accessible manner devoid of technical jargons but if you ask what is the real role of the uh, you know the, the journalist science journalist and the journalist of course science communication is part of their profession as well because 
her job also in, in, include to write about what is really happening, science news story, but it also include the investigative science uh, journalism, you know? So uh, investigate what is actually happened. For example, uh, 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 for example, my, my good friend is Prasad Ravindranath of um, Dr. Prasad is working for Hindu. And you might have seen that many of his very interesting stories are featured on the bad science that is happening in the country. Uh, people are faking, fabricating the results and publishing in uh, predatory journals. All these are basically the, you know, the investigative science, uh, uh, you know, the uh, journalism. So those kind of investigative science journalism doesn't come under the purview of a good science communicator. So as a science communicator, I don't think that I will ever, uh, you know, of course, I respect uh, people who do this kind of work at the very, very essential. But my um, work is not on those lines. But my work is mostly on uh, making the science accessible to everybody. So to, 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 to diverge, uh, you know, without using much of the scientific uh, jargon. For example, my own show on um, every week, I do have Curiosity. So Curiosity is a show where I, I pick up 10 very important papers published last week, prior week. So every week I, I release it and I simply do not simply read the headline and, uh, you know, summarize it in one sentence or two. No, I dig deeper. And I actually look at the how, what kind of statistics they, they used it and what kind of inferences they made and are the conclusions valid and how do I relate with other, uh, you know, the stories published earlier. So that is what I do that. That, that the same format that I'm, I've been following for uh, last, uh, I would say six weeks. It's continuing, it's just a new endeavor from my part. So yes, so science communicator is someone who is actually making the science accessible to everybody, yes. So uh, the next question for you, Felix, is uh, that uh, on a practical note, since uh, 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 we can see you are a good time manager. <laughs> mm -hmm. So how do you manage time to execute many activities? Could you share your practices? This is Ravi Kumar Kanaparthi from Kerala. OK, Ravi Kumar, actually, I follow something called, I can, I can show you. I, I follow something called bullet journaling. You know, the bullet journaling, uh, you can just search out how the bullet journaling works like. For example, this is my notebook. You can see my notebook. So here, you know, that you can see that day, day by day, I actually make the plans, you know, and uh, the bullet. So I, I make the tick marks in if I did this work or then I delegate into the other day. So that way I, I, I plan, I actually plan quite nicely. Every week I do that. And I also have weekly schedule. That is really important. Weekly, you know, the time uh, that you check your calendar and see what is actually coming the week to be done and prioritization of important over urgent. So urgent things are matters, but always uh, responding to the un urgent matters are not a good time management skill at all. And you know, uh, what is important, for example, if you if writing a book is your priority, then you really have to spend considerable amount of time every single day towards that goal. I published a book, you know, last year I published, I know that, uh, you know, it is actually, a, 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 you know, it's a, it's a lot of hard work, but it's really worth taking because once a book has been published, you know, well, I'm a, I'm a man, uh, you know, but I, I can understand that probably it's a kind of same satisfaction a woman get when the baby came out finally. You know, it's really satisfying uh, once a book is actually released. So you really have to actually do baby step by baby step towards achieving that final goal. So importance, the prioritization of importance, the important task over the urgent task is really, really essential to manage your time uh, very well. And there are so many other techniques, for example, Pomodoro principle, you can, you can apply, uh, you know, an Eisenhower matrix to prioritize. A lot of things are there. And I have written extensively. You can just search my name, Felix. Uh, for crux of time management that's one of my article uh, where i detailed a lot of uh, tools and tactics on how to manage your time effectively yes that's great so uh, there's another question uh, which has come up and i think you would be one of the best person to answer this uh, this is from bini mary uh, many kids nowadays say that science is hard and they hate to study it uh, so, uh, Bini wants to know, uh, how will we get school children to get excited about science to lead them? And I think you are doing it all the time. So, uh, yeah, that would be good to talk. Like the... Come again, please. I think um, um, my internet is a little bit... Yeah. Could you, could you please repeat the question? Mm-hmm.
Yes, Felix, you can listen to me. Yes. Uh, Manju, could you please repeat the question? Yes, Felix. So this is ben, uh, Bini Mary from Meghalaya. Okay. And she's asking okay. many kids nowadays say that science is hard and they hate to study. So she wants to know how okay. we get the school children to get excited about science uh, to lead them. And I think you are doing pretty good in that direction. So. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So science, see that uh, I think that uh, one important thing is that science to make science exciting for the kids. You know, I think we have to actually make a, a storyline fashion to I think the internet is getting interrupted. I think he'll be just back. Yes. Yeah, I'm yeah. Hamza. No, it's think okay. It's yeah, please please yeah, go me. ahead. Yes. 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 Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Yes. So. Uh, yeah, uh, the answer would that to that question would be that, you know, for uh, uh, make the science more accessible to the kids. So instead of simply saying the facts, you should actually uh, uh, put more interest on, uh, you know, uh, you should actually look at the concepts. So we, we have to actually say that concept more important than merely putting the facts, you know, and to, to increase the uh, uh, children's curiosity on the, the science. You know, of course, uh, a lot of problems with the everyday life right now is that the kids are more. Yes. Yes. It's okay. Yeah, it's keep on getting disconnected. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the yes. So my point is that it you know the the kids uh, we have to actually look the very good, exciting, popular science uh, books to the kids for them to read about it rather than asking the kids to, you know, look at the, uh, uh, this one, the uh, mobile phones or watching the TV, we should inculcate the reading habit and especially the books like, uh, the you know, the, the Cosmos by Carl Sagan. I can easily recommend the, any kids to sh should read that book. So I think that those are really important for the kids to uh, cultivate the, you know, the, the, the science and habit to, to have an interest in the, the sciences. And if the kids are really, Yes, he needs to be getting back again. Yeah, it's okay. And if the kids are really small, then the, the you know, uh, the parents have to read out the exciting scientific stories to the kids. You know, all those things are uh, important. Uh, I think some, some tricks for, uh, yeah. Next question, please. Yeah, so uh, uh, you really emphasize on the uh, virtues, the value system uh, in science and leadership. Uh, there's a question, related question from Sunidhi Gulati from Bhopal. Uh, she's asking, what is the need for virtuous uh, leadership in the 21st uh, century, not only in science, in every sector? So, I, I, uh, so she's talking of virtuous uh, working, I would say, in 21st century, uh, seeing the scenario around. I mean, um, hello? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it's extremely important. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Hello. Because yeah. people, so uh, the virtue is extremely important. Hello. Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, Alex, yes. I think my internet is really flaky today, yes. It's Come again, okay, what is your point again? Yeah, so uh, the virtues in the 21st century, I would say, in short, <laughs> she wants to wants you to comment on. Yeah, you see, the science is always important. Virtues are extremely important, especially coming to the ethics in the science, because if you achieve a position through a, a wrong way, uh, you are not going to be a good science leader.
yes okay hello i think we'll just keep some patience yeah can you hear me yes yes felix yes okay okay so yeah. there's a uh, so related point is that uh, you know yeah yeah yes please go ahead so i was telling about the virtue the virtue is extremely important because a, a bad science leader will make the entire organization in a very terrible situation nobody is going to enjoy your uh, leadership and people will suffer tremendously you know uh, if you're a bad mentor the students uh, will be having extremely bad time uh, uh, you know to to get, to get uh, anything out of you it will not be productive association with uh, your student and uh, the phd will not be fruitful and uh, you're going to inflict a lot of mental distress amongst your uh, colleagues and there won't be any productivity so you know in 21st century or uh, you know the back in 20 2000 years back the it, the virtues are extremely important so the same principles that have been following the humanity ever since you know the enlightenment we have to actually look uh, for you know follow for those uh, good practices towards the years yeah there is a related thing again uh, by uh, mukulal saying how can popular science be used to root out the pseudo science which is making a huge comeback in our society yeah so uh, of course uh, one of the main purpose of the science communicators in general is to fight for the science you know and the pseudo science is of course a very very big problem and through my youtube channel and as well as my right everything the pseudo science i i try my very best to get uh, these things out of it so how do how do that so right now uh, communicate the real science and to make uh, the people understand and appreciate the science rather than uh, promulgating what a pseudo science is so uh, we have to discourage promoting science and to see the the excitement of the knowledge discovery is all about uh, you know the science is all about learning from the mistakes while the pseudo science is all about uh, you know uh, not learning from the mistake or not accepting that they did any mistake so there is main difference between science and pseudo so pseudo science textbook for example same textbook is being followed for 200 years or 300 years without any change and they say it is their asset but science no science is always modifying learning from our mistake and that is the only way that we can actually make some progress so uh, uh, you know the way to fight the pseudo science is uh, you know uh, to say to reveal the beauty of the science in an accessible manner so one main mistake that every uh, good science they try to communicate the science with lots of technical jargon but that is not a good solution so we really have to completely avoid the technical jargon and we have to approach us in a language that is accessible to them and especially popular science article or relaying the videos in your own language is really important i do write in malayalam i do release videos in malayalam i think that's really really important rather than uh, overly emphasizing on english yes so there's another one felix yes yes so uh, this is uh, uh, quite a bit interesting on where do we put science fiction in science communication it's by pramod sakharkar science fiction uh, could you repeat the question uh, it's got disconnected so so it's a question from pramod sakharkar and he is asking where do we put science fiction uh, amongst the different aspect of science communication in general as a contribution to science fiction temperament science fiction and science fiction temperament Yeah, yeah science fiction okay the question so science fiction is really important because it's a lot of imagination so many things that we know today are actually the products of the tangible goods are the products of the uh, the science fiction writers of the past or the artists you know or one good example i can recite is uh, uh, the airplanes so any is uh, nothing but it is actually inspired by the drawings the prototype drawings of, of the leonardo da vinci of uh, you know the the ornithopter that is what he said he imagined uh, orny means bird uh, you know ornithopter that that can design the bird like vehicle so that kind of drawing has inspired the uh, aeronautic engineers to design uh, you know the the flying machines the, the so called aircraft so i think uh, you know this fiction is really important because it actually in, 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 you know uh, 
makes the imagination a lot. It opens up the entire field of imagination for the, the, the students. So really important for have that. And those ideas that we gain, for example, I've read uh, one, uh, you know, the Isaac Asimov, for example, he has written so many of these uh, science fiction, uh, you know, and uh, if you look at that, some of the Asimov's writing, you can say that a man with uh, uh, photosynthetic ability, so he don't have to eat, you know, or drink anything. So this might have inspired the, uh, it, it might inspire the, the future engineers, the, the genetic modifiers. You know, to, to clone the uh, chloroplast genes or rubisco gene into the animal system. Who knows? I mean, we, we, we cannot predict how the, the future is going to be like. So I think the imagination is really important, a set of any uh, good science fiction is. Yes. Yeah, that's really important. Uh, so another very, uh, although uh, I think many of us, the, the young uh, uh, supervisors and, uh, and, and the new PhD students, uh, uh, we, we tend to see uh, many of the science students and in different fields also getting reckless uh, when, you know, they, 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 the, uh, when they get into the comparison box uh, of uh, a leader who is a boss and a leader who is an actual leader. So, uh, you know, in terms of achievements uh, on a time scale. So that comparison thing, which is making students reckless, uh, getting, you know, the specified uh, uh, components within a specified time limit uh, to show to the rest of the world, okay, I did what I was supposed to do. <laughs> Uh, rather than what I, uh, uh, I I should be doing. Mancho, I'm sorry, your voice is breaking. Uh, could you please repeat the question again? Or maybe you can post it in the chat box. Yeah. So can you listen to so, me? Yeah, yeah. now I, I think I can I can listen. I, it says that network bandwidth is low. So, I don't so know it's, a, uh, it's a question Go that ahead, addresses, please. Uh, it's a question that addresses the comparison maybe I can of my uh, video. Hmm. Yeah. I'm audible now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. So there's a question that is uh, uh, sort of trying to know uh, 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 when somebody gets into the comparison box of, uh, uh, you know, uh, in terms of achievements, uh, working under a um, true leader or a authoritarian, uh, you know, uh, leader or the boss, boss kind of leader and a leader kind of leader, <laughs> the comparison box. Mm -hmm. so it, it really makes yeah. sometimes students reckless. Uh, Okay, I'm not able to do this. The other person is able to do that. It is from uh, Mridula from Assam. Uh, yes, Mridula. So I think that recklessness that you're referring is all about, uh, you know, the, the perspective. So we really have to change our perspective to see what, what makes a good leader and what actually makes uh, the so-called boss. I mean, the going along with the group think or uh, the herd behavior what others do we should also follow the same behavior for example others are uh, you know publishing trash papers in impact factor journal we should also publish trash impact factor journal so without may any of this uh, you know the contribution what contribution does that paper makes majority of the papers that are being published these days uh, the point which i keep on saying is that the the, the papers even the, in the high impact factor journal are nothing but a mediocre paper. They do something called, uh, you know, random left and right of the spectra without any significant change in the, uh, the knowledge sphere. So uh, does this publishing those kind of papers make any sense? Yes, it does make only two things to you. It will help you get a job. And if you're already in a job, it will help you to get a promotion. Other than that, what exactly majority or I can say 99.9% .9 of the papers actually doesn't Simply publishing is nothing but a technical, nobody can do it. There is no imagination. So, you know, the your, uh, coming back to your question about the boss and the leader, it's all about the mindset. You know, are you going to respect a politician turn leader? Yes, it got interrupted. Yes. Are you there, Felix?
Yeah, it's working. Yeah, I got disconnected again. I hope it's okay now. Yes. So yeah, Felix, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I think uh, it's four thirty, and uh, we should be concluding. Uh, yeah. Yeah, maybe you can pick up one last question if we can do it. Okay, so uh, here's uh, something like when uh, you are talking of ethical leadership, somebody is uh, confusing that with like what is the difference between ethical and spiritual leadership? So it is by Rupalia. Spiritual. Uh, spiritual uh, leadership is see it's uh, the the term spiritual itself is really really uh, tough to define what is actually spiritual. You know, according to me, the spirituality or uh, the God. If you ask me, do I believe in God? Yes, I believe in God. For me, the God is nature. So preserving nature is really important. So spiritual leadership, if the the leader is preaching to uh, conserve the nature, lead a lifestyle which is uh, low carbon footprint, then I, I I totally support that kind of spiritual leadership. You know, now the spiritual leadership and science. scientific leadership what is the diff, uh, what, is there any uh, connection i don't know i mean it all depends how you define the term spirituality you know so for me i, I define the term spirituality as someone who is uh, living uh, leading a environmentally conscious life he is the most spiritual man or a woman in the in the world rather than someone who actually uh, reads the religious texts you know uh, if you look at if you read carefully the profound is same to respect the nature so if you do that way then of course there is a scientific way of living so science the scientists are also saying the same thing uh, to lead a life as close to nature as possible you know rather than living a life of artificiality you know uh, so the carbon footprint matters carbon neutrality matters and uh, you know the climate change is a major problem around the world so what science says and what religion says is also kind of same but it also depends how you define the religion you know so according to me the religion the the, the message is very clear that we should respect our mother earth and we we have only one earth the pale blue dot so we have to be living a life as close to the nature as possible so that makes you a perfect science leader So oh, thank you, Felix. So that's absolutely true. We are just a small part of that pale blue planet, again, which is a small, you know, dot in the entire universe as you define it. Uh, and we should be, uh, uh, you know, uh, trying our best to contribute in our all small virtuous ways towards, uh, you know, making it a better place to live for us and for the future yes. generations to come. That was a wonderful talk, and uh, and uh, I really appreciate of uh, your. ways of doing things the unconventional ways doing different things and doing them differently so so i think uh, uh, we all enjoyed it thanks a lot uh, uh, to to thank be you there as a speaker so yeah thank you so much yeah thanks a lot thanks a lot dr manju jain and it's a privilege to have you here and i will see you thank again you. in uh, you know we will be moderating some other sessions too yeah Thank you so awesome. much, and I will see you all at five thirty. So our next session is at five thirty. So see you all. So now, Goodbye. now he is in the role of a host. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>